Hey, hey guys, welcome back to 22LR, where we focus on the competitive side of the rimfire world. We are back out here at the range today in northern Colorado. We are shooting in some cold and windy conditions this afternoon, but that is part of the fun of this sport, is getting out and shooting in adverse conditions. Today we're going to be covering the November 2022 Course of Fire. This one is going to be a little trickier than last month's, so don't be discouraged if you miss a few extra targets that you didn't miss last month. The targets in this month's course of fire are going to be a little smaller and some of the barricades are going to be a little trickier to navigate. So don't, uh, don't fret if you miss it once or twice. That's part of the learning curve and part of why we get out here and practice this stuff and part of why you guys tune into these videos so you can get an edge on your competition at your next rimfire match. All right, enough talking. Let's get out there and shoot some targets. All right, guys, let's get going with tower defense. We have a 1.5 at 50 yards, a 2.5 at 90, and a 4 inch at 100. We are going to start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the targets in the following manner and order. Top of one of the vertical blocks, near to far, one shot each. Lower block, in between the two vertical ones, far to near, with one shot each. Then top of the other vertical block, near to far, with one shot each, except for the final target, which you'll engage twice. All right, guys, let's get things going with tower defense. Starting the stage off, my original game plan was to shoot the two vertical blocks from a kneeling position and then go prone on the horizontal block. But I abandoned that plan pretty quickly in favor of taking a seated position and allowing that pump pillow to fill the void and give my stock a place to rest, ultimately making both my rifle and myself a lot more stable for these shots. I also decided that I wasn't going to dial, I was just going to use holdovers for the entire stage. Speaking of holdovers, a word to the wise. The only dope that you can truly trust is dope that you have trued yourself. Anybody who tells you what your dope should be is very likely wrong because they don't necessarily know your muzzle velocity, your barrel length, or your ballistic coefficient. An example of this is my daughter and I can be shooting the same ammunition, my dope at 100 will be 1.7 mils or 1.8 mils, and her dope at 100 will be 1.9 to 2.0. Moral of the story, trusting somebody else's dope is likely to cost you points. Now as far as gear is concerned, my pump pillow is the strapless behemoth from WeBad. I'm running the Grey Ops CNC Mini Plate Pro and Armageddon Gear Mini Plate Pro Pad. Now I make a mental mistake here and I forget to fire the last shot at that far target. I have to correct that mistake before I drop my mag, run the bolt forward, chambering the last round and getting that shot off. Well under time. All right, that one down, let's get on to the next one. Following the blocks, we have two to one by four. We have a one and two inch on a double hanger at 75 yards. We are gonna start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the large target with two shots and then the small target with one shot in the following order. Each tank trap tip, the shooter chooses the order from the rope supported by the legs of the tank trap. Note, the tank trap will have a rope tied on the legs to create a rope position or a bridge in between the lower legs. A restriction here, the rifle must only be supported by the rope and not directly supported by the tank trap leg. A front bag may be used between the rifle and the rope, but not in between the rope and the ground. Alright guys, keeping things rolling with 2 to 1 by 4. With tank traps, I always employ the same strategy, and this one's no different. I'm going to place my bag up on the tip, give it a couple of slaps, flatten it out, balance my rifle on that bag the best I can so that the rifle sits without too much input from me, bend at the hips, work my feet back, reach up, touch the bag with the heel of my palm, and place my thumb on the stock to give me the stability I'm looking for to engage this one inch target. Now I'm going to employ the same strategy for every tip and then things are going to get a little different for the rope and we'll talk about that here in a second. Now, as far as gear is concerned, I've got the strapless behemoth again. I've got my Armageddon gear medium with heavy fill, and I'm running the Grey Ops Mini Plate Pro one more time. This plate is just really indispensable for stages like this. So if you have Arca and you have a couple hundred bucks that you want to spend, you'll definitely find the value in this piece of gear. Now, when we get down to the rope here, the rope is going to be tricky. Now, I don't know how your rope is going to be situated. I don't know if it's going to be taut or if it's going to be loose and swinging. But either way, 
uh, you're going to be, want to be mindful of the fact that if you load into the rope with your rifle to adjust your point of aim, that rope is going to give back and it's going to shift your point of aim. I experienced a little bit of this while I was shooting this stage and so I had to figure out how to adjust my point of aim using nothing but my bag and stop trying to move the fore end of the rifle because that just didn't work out. Being as this is a one inch target, take your time, make sure that you're on target before you start your trigger squeeze because a one inch target at 75 yards is definitely going to be easy to miss. All right guys, time for a little product plug. We decided that we needed some mag blocks. Now, I have shot these matches over and over and over again for the last couple of years and I honestly cannot count how many times I have left a chamber flag in when the timer starts. And <laughs> that always burns a, a few seconds on the clock when you realize I can't run my bolt forward because my chamber flag is in. So Charlie Yao over at Yao Tech actually makes these really cool R700 rimfire mag blocks that go in your R700 platform uh, rimfire or R700 centerfire, or they actually make them for CZ as well. So if you want one of these slick, Yao Tech mag blocks for your CZ or your R700 platform rimfire or your centerfire rifle. They come with these, these really slick, upside down. They come with these really slick little, little labels here that remind you that when they dangle to remove them before it's time to pew pew. And they also come with this piece of elastic to help hold your bolt forward so it's not flopping around while you're transitioning between stages, walking your way up and down the firing line. All right, let's get on with some more shooting. All right, after the tank trap, we have stay steady and in focus. We have a one inch at 30 yards, a one to quarter inch KYL rack at 42, and a three inch at 100. We're gonna start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. On the star signal, the shooter will take a prone supported position and engage each target with one shot each, hit to move on in the following order. One inch KYL, far target. Three quarter inch KYL, near target. Half inch KYL, far target. Quarter inch KYL, near target. Quarter inch KYL, far target. Get ready. Three, two, one, engage. All right, on to stay steady and in focus. I really like the name of the stage because it tells you exactly what you need to do in order to be successful at the stage. Now, staying steady is going to rely on fundamentals, a good bag, and a good trigger squeeze. If you guys pay close attention while I'm shooting this stage, you'll see that every time I squeeze the trigger, I'm pinning the trigger to the rear until I see where that bullet went on the target. This allows me to make those minute corrections to keep me centered up on the target while I make my way down the KYL rack and back and forth between the near and far target. Now the other component of this is staying in focus. Staying in focus is actually twofold. It's staying focused with your parallax knob and staying mentally focused on which target you need to be shooting. So speaking of mental clarity, I felt like the best strategy for me for this stage was to not dial. I didn't want one more thing for my left hand to do that could potentially make me lose track of which target I was on. Now sometimes having too many components going on a single stage can pull your mental focus and make you lose track of something like what target you need to be on. For my equipment on the stage, I'm using the Harris SBRM bipod with the Really Right Stuff Arca adapter and the Armageddon Gear Schmedium in heavy fill. All right, guys, that one was a lot of fun and tested our mental focus. Let's get on to the next one. Next up, barrel and a horse. We have a two inch at 55, a two and a half inch at 65, and a three inch at 75. We're gonna start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage each target from near to far with one shot each in the following manner and order. Top of the 55 gallon drum, top of the sawhorse, bottom of the sawhorse, and finally prone. Shooter ready? Shooter ready. Three, two, one, engage. All right, rolling right on into barrel and a horse. My strategy on this stage is gonna be pretty cut and dry. I'm gonna use my bipod and a bag on the top of the barrel. Then I'm gonna slide the bipod forward on the arca rail to make room for my bag on the stock when I transition over to the sawhorse. Then I'm gonna to transition to the bottom of the sawhorse and then off the bottom of the sawhorse, my bipod is gonna be in about the right place for me to take those last three shots in the prone position. Now, originally, I planned on changing my magazine after firing the three shots from the bottom of the sawhorse. However, I run into a little bit of a rimlock malfunction, and I end up having to change magazines early. 
This seems like a good time to mention why it's so important to always have a spare magazine on you. Additionally, I felt it was smart to go ahead and use holdovers for all three of these ranges. That's kind of been my common theme throughout this whole course of fire, is holding over instead of dialing. I'm practicing that a little bit more just to get proficient with it because I found in the last couple of years that it really does speed the stage up and allow you to get through things a little bit quicker when you use holdovers versus dialing every range that you're going to be shooting at. For my gear on this stage, I'm running my Harris bipod using the Armageddon Gear Schmedium Heavy Fill and the Weebad Strapless Behemoth. That one tested our barricade position building. Let's go ahead and move on to the last stage of this course of fire. Last up for this month's course of fire is a ladder, a frame. We have a three inch at 80 yards, and we are gonna start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the target with two rounds in the following order. Lower portion of the ladder, upper portion of the ladder, prone under the ladder, top of the tires, using the rooftop. Note, this is the bonus point stage where you earn 0.1 bonus points per second left on the clock. rounded out this month's course of fire we have a ladder a frame for my strategy on this stage i think it's really important to keep track of both the position that you're shooting from and the position that you're going to be going to i think the natural inclination for most shooters is going to shoot from the top of the ladder and then transition over to the top of the tires however that could potentially cost you time and impacts if your ro is not paying attention or it chooses not to give you a gentle reminder that you might be shooting from the wrong barricade so keeping track of where you are and where you're going to, I think is going to be the key to success in this particular stage. The way I choose to set my gear up on this one is so that my bipod is in a place where I can use it for every position. I'm going to be resting the rifle and bipod on my bag as I make my way up the ladder. I'm going to deploy the bipod when I go to shoot prone under the ladder. It's going to be useful again on top of the tires. And then I'm going to kick the left leg out so I can build a nice sturdy position on the rooftop to the left. This Harris bipod is pretty versatile, and the best thing about it is it doesn't cost $1,200. On windy days like this, I tend to pay a lot more attention as to where the bullet is actually hitting the target so that I can make good solid wind corrections and keep myself on target throughout the duration of the course of fire. So over the last couple of months, I've got the opportunity to really get to know this Voodoo 360, and I have to say, this is one of the most accurate rimfire rifles I have ever seen. This thing can produce quarter inch groups at 100 yards with good high quality rimfire ammunition. And the bolt throw is immaculate. All right guys, well that is a wrap for the November 2022 NRL 22 course of fire. I had a fun time shooting this. Uh, it was not nearly as challenging as I expected it to be. Uh, this month shouldn't be too bad. I think most people are going to enjoy themselves. The props weren't too terribly difficult. Um, they gave you plenty of time to make your transitions. I don't think there's really going to be anything that is going to hang you up or, or stump you, uh, except for maybe the, the stage where you have to go back and forth uh, between the three sets of targets with the KYL rack. That one takes some mental focus, but if you just study the stage ahead of time, I think you'll do just fine. Um, on a side note, so this little bolt catch right here broke off and my action would not retain the bolt. However, I gave the guys over at Voodoo Gunworks, the guys and gals over at Voodoo Gunworks, a phone call as soon as it happened, as soon as I finished that stage, within 15 minutes of the bolt catch breaking, um, I have a shipping label and it's ready to go back to Utah uh, to be repaired so that I can continue shooting these videos for you guys and shooting these NRL 22 matches that I love so much. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like this sort of content and you're enjoying these video walkthroughs, do me a huge favor. Tap that like button, reach down there, touch the subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you guys get notified every time I put out a new Course of Fire video because I really do this to just help the community become better shooters and help everybody score more impacts at their matches. I'll see you guys on the next one. As always, guys, thank you for watching. Remember, competitive shooting is 25% math, 25% practice, and 50% mental focus. Don't let one bad stage trip you up. I hope to see you out on the range.